We are joined by a very special guest who we haven't had on the podcast before. James Allison, Mercedes F1 Technical Director. Welcome on the podcast, James. Um, for those that don't know, including myself, what is it exactly that you do? What is a technical director? <laughs> I often get asked that. And, um, and when I start to describe it, it just sounds like I've got the world's most boring job. <laughs> so so it, it, um, it, it's never possible really to convey with a description of my responsibilities how much fun my job is. Because my responsibilities are to make sure the car is legal, follows all the rules, make sure it's quick. Uh, make sure it's reliable, make sure we don't hurt anybody, uh, and to make sure that all the money we spend on developing the car is spent wisely and that we organise ourselves properly. And that just sounds like any boring manager guy type job. Sounds but, like a big job, James. Yeah, but the, the reality job. of it is we get to play with cars, um, get to have fun, uh, work with a bunch of other people who like making shiny cars go quick <laughs> and, and just have all the thrill and challenge of what is a ridiculously competitive environment, but one where there's a lot more laughing than there is shouting. Well, that's good. So we like, we like to say that on this podcast, don't we? Yeah. There's more laughing than there is shouting. We just, <laughs> yeah. We just about manage it. <laughs> just about. I've almost... Well, no, no, I've not. There's no almost about it. I've got more admiration and respect for people like James than I do the drivers because I'm the least technical man in the world. I struggle to hang a picture frame or put up a shelf. Like, I am just useless in every way. I'm even worse at that than I am as a broadcaster, and that's saying something. I, so I can't fathom your guys' brains to be across all the technical details when you walk through the factories and see the tiny little details. You guys must be incredibly intelligent to stay across so much technical stuff. I'm not sure that there's any remarkable intelligence involved. It's just... Oh, I um, disagree. There must be. We find... We find fun stuff that other people would, <laughs> would find dull. You know, we, we enjoy being really anally retentive about really small details. Um, and there's a lot of us. So when, when you look at a Formula One team, you can see there is a massive amount of detail. And it's quite easy to be intimidated by that or overwhelmed by it because you think, how could anyone have their head around it? Truth is, no one has got their head around it. All of us have a certain amount of competence, but working together, <laughs> we end up collectively covering all the ground necessary to be able to do something as rich and varied as take a car around all the circuits each year and, and do a decent job of that. But absolutely nobody has a top to bottom understanding of the car. And it's only when you work together as a group that, that you're able to do it. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's fascinating, isn't it? And, yeah. and would you say, I get asked a lot by people who are brand new to F1, so I, it's just the driver, it's not really a team sport, which obviously we all know it's a phenomenal team sport. And it amazes me that there's so many different parts to it and bring it all together. And I'd never thought of it like that, that even people like yourself don't know what certain bits does, but there's other people that do. It's such a fascinating sport, isn't it? Well, I, I've liked it. Um, I used to play rugby at school a little bit. I was dreadful at it, but I liked rugby because there was the sort of position on the pitch for all shapes and sizes. What position were you? I was a second row. A, oh, a lousy okay. one, but a second row. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and, and the Formula One teams like that, but massively more so. There are almost, you could pick any personality type and any skill. There would be a role in a Formula One team that that person would slot into and feel at home because it is a sport that asks an enormous amount of the team in total and you need a very wide range of types of people to be able to make the team function. What's this winter break been like for you then, I imagine? Winter break. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much a winter break. Did you get so much of a nap at any point? Was there, was there a day off? Yeah, the... Uh, <laughs> it's a funny thing working in the sport because everyone asks you, oh, you must be, you know, be able to kick back now, the season's over. And the busiest time by far in the factory is November through to Easter. And and the 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 concept of a sort of winter break <laughs> doesn't exist. Um, it's <laughs> it's when, uh, when everything is coming together for this new car. Hundreds, hundreds and thousands of pieces having to be uh, conceived, designed, created made, tested, bolted together and uh, and then all culminating in today where you know the thing gets gets put on a track. I mean I it was only together as a car 
for the very first time last night. You know, that's, wow. that's how late it happens. And, and the, uh, the, the tsunami of activity in the factory to, to deal with that is, is breathtaking. How do you deal with that pressure then? Because a lot of it does, I guess, fall onto you. When we asked you what you actually do, you're saying, well, OK, it's my responsibility to make that car go fast. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I end up at this time of year not sleeping very well. So... So I, I wouldn't say that it's possible to actually do this and not be affected by it. Um, or if you were able to be unaffected by it, you would have very limited imagination, I would say. Because there's, there's so many thousands of things that could go horribly wrong uh, in terms of us not getting the bits together, in terms of us making them not strong enough, um, not being the right shape to create the lap time that we're hoping for. You know, that, that is that's a big old list of things that are stressful. <laughs> And, uh, and so I tend to sort of smile my way through the days and then, <laughs> and, then, and then sleep poorly at night. Just while James was talking then, it brought home the glamour of motorsport that we're stood next to these unbelievably shiny, beautiful motorhomes at Silverstone, the home of the British Grand Prix. And yet still, as James was talking, there was a very scruffy looking blue Volvo truck reversing back. It's sort of like this is the glamour of F1 and it's also sort of the nitty-gritty of motorsport. You must love it still. Well, just on that, you've chosen to set up next to our oldest truck. Yeah, I you don't know, know what those we've ones. done they are, They're beautifully in their new livery for the year and you've you've, you've set up next to it's this old workhorse. Because we keep it real. It's because we <laughs> yeah. keep it real in form. We're down to earth here on the Fast and the Curious. Well, there you go. But you, you guys must still love it because, you know, you guys give up so much of your lives to go travelling around the world to be on cold Silverstone mornings like this. How much do you love being a part of this team? Uh, well, it's, I, I think that anyone who has been in this sport for any length of time, if they don't feel fortunate, then, then they want a good slap because <laughs> it's, it's just... What a quote. It's, you know, I compare myself to my brothers and sisters sometimes and see... The, the slightly more regular working lives they've picked and they don't get the fun that we get. And they don't have, above all else, they don't have this amazingly clear thing, which is we know exactly what we're here for. We're here to design a car that's quicker than anyone else's and to win a championship with it. And, and most jobs are more blurry than that, you know, mm. whether you're maximizing profits or looking after shareholders or, or, or customers, you just don't know. Whereas in this, it's really clear. On that big aim, are you confident? Can you no, do it? No, I think you'd have to be psychotic to be confident without <laughs> the evidence of having <laughs> run up against the other teams. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we set out an ambitious programme for our car. I'm happy that all the things we think we've made improvements on, that, that we've measured improvements in virtually and on rigs, uh, I will only actually rest easy when we've run it against others and found out in anger whether that's come true. We don't think you're psychotic at Mercedes. We think you're all brilliant. And we hope that you guys can have a great season with George. Send Lewis out on a high. And we honestly wish you all the, all the best this and season. The biggest thing, I just hope that you get a good night's sleep soon. Yes. Well, uh, me too. That'd be nice. <laughs> James, thanks so much for being on The Fast and the Curious. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay.